Lest you think me too pessimistic, I will admit that this dystopia is as probable as the utopian vision that insists the killer drones will turn out to be like the good terminators, that Facebook will defeat fake news with the truth bot and its human companions who are happily employed in glorious state-of-the-art call centers as content moderators, that Elon Musk will solve the world energy problem, Bill Gates will end, will end hunger, Google will find a cure for cancer, and Uber or Foxconn's effect on labor rights is irrelevant because we'll all be paid a basic universal income, have unlimited credit lines, or run our own Bitcoin mining operation. The counter-revolution never happened. The naive dreams of early internet communities and the free software movement are not lost, they have just been updated, cleaned up and stripped of any hint of ideology to make them more universal. And no, the fact that nobody pays tax anymore is not a threat to democracy because they all give so much to charity. Yes, this utopia is probable too as probable as the vision of a coalition between Trump, Sisi, Duterte, Orban, Modi, Erdogan, Putin, Bin Salman, and who knows, maybe even Le Pen, leading the civilized world into a new age of prosperity and security and stability and sustainable growth. Yes, it could happen. Millions upon millions believe it, and they can't be all wrong, right? However, you do have a chance to influence where in the broad spectrum between these equally unlikely or likely scenarios the future lies. Yes, on the simple question of how to finally retire the hashtag free Allah, you have little, if any, agency. But on the question of whether the internet is a space in which we come together to enjoy, assert, practice and defend universal rights and freedoms, you have a lot of agency. Unlike me, you have not been defeated. I don't have much to say by way of advice. I am, after all, out of touch and slightly outdated. The best I can do is repeat themes I used to touch upon when participating in conferences like these in the past. The last time was 2011, I think. Fix your own democracy. This has always been my answer to the question, how can we help? I still believe it's the only possible answer. Not only is where you live, work, vote, pay tax and organize the place where you have the more influence, but a setback for human rights in a place where democracy has deep roots is certain to be used as an excuse for even worse violations in societies where rights are more fragile. I trust recent events made it evident that there is much that needs fixing. I look forward to being inspired by how you go about it. Don't play the game of nations. We lose much when you allow your work to be used as an instrument of foreign policy, no matter how benign your current ruling coalition is. We risk much when human rights advocacy becomes a weapon in a cold war, just as the Arab revolutions were lost when revolutionaries found themselves unwitting and unwilling recruits in proxy wars between regional powers. We reach out to you, not in search of powerful allies, but because we confront the same global problems and share universal values, and with a firm belief in the power of solidarity. Defend complexity and diversity. No change to the structure of or organization of the internet can make my life safer. My online speech is often used against me in the courts and in smear campaigns, but it isn't the reason why I'm prosecuted. My offline activity is. My late father served a similar term for his activism before there was a web. What the internet has truly changed is not the political dissent, but rather social dissent. We must protect it as a safe space where people can experiment with gender and sexual identities, explore what it means to be gay or a single mom or an atheist or a Christian in the Middle East, but also what it means to be black and angry in the US, to be Muslim and ostracized in Europe, or to be a coal miner in a world that must cut back on greenhouse gas. The internet is the only space where all different modes of being Palestinian can meet. 
If I express this precariousness in symbolic violence, will you hear me out? Will you protect me from both prosecution by the establishment and exploitation by the well-funded fringe extremists? Assert your right to be a creator, not a consumer. We love tech because it allows us to be performers in our own spectacle, the storyteller in our own narrative and the philosophers of our own discourse. Not an eyeball for advertisers or a demographic for posters. Keep it that way, please. Keep it that way. Written in Torah prison, delivered on 13 April 2017.